Final hour of this Tuesday edition of Drive Time Sports, driven by Sus Superstore, is underway here on Extra Sports 1300. Ryan Kaufman and Wheels. Sands, Matt Pauley, but not for long. Matt and Dan Karcher will be along at 6. First Sky Sox warm-up. And then hopefully the boys can get a uh, series salvaging win against the I-Cubs uh, later this evening. Got a couple of interviews coming in this hour. In a little bit, you'll hear from the newest member of Switchbacks FC is Chandler Hoffman. But right now, to get the lowdown and the wrap-up from day five of Broncos training camp, we go to the phone lines and welcome in one of the intrepid writers of Mile High Report. Follow him on Twitter, at John Heath NFL. J-O-N is how he spells John. He is John Heath. John, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, a pleasure as always. So, uh, biggest takeaway for you from uh, training camp today up at Dove Valley? Uh, not necessarily an on-field thing, but they did a couple things differently today. They played music for the first time. They haven't been doing that this camp in, in stretches. So I think that means they reached a point where they're comfortable and they're into the groove and really into the swing of things. They're getting that going. I thought it was interesting. One of the songs was um, Country Girl by Luke Bryan. I think that was uh, specifically probably a Peyton song. <laughs> and they had a couple of former guys out there today. Brandon Stokely was there. Joel Dreesen was there. And uh, Chris Cooper was there. Talked a little bit to Stokely during practice, and um, it was pretty interesting. He said that he's, he's done with his time in the NFL and that he's happy. He's ho- coaching some um Pop Warner, he's coaching his son right now. He's living in the area. And I said, if Peyton called you up today and it was like a couple guys got hurt, can you come to camp? So you wouldn't even consider it because he said he was, he's totally done. And he was like, well, I, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I would say that. So I thought it was interesting that Stokely's done, but if Peyton Manning called him today, he would probably consider going back out there with him. I, I, don't blame Brandon Stokely uh, for that, certainly. Did you, uh, along those lines, did you get uh, Brandon Stokely's take on the current Broncos batch of receivers? I did ask him about the receivers, and he spoke highly of DT and Cody, but the guy that he think, he pointed out, Emmanuel Sanders, and he really likes Sanders. He's, the, he's probably the favorite receiver they have right now. And I asked him about uh, Sanders playing a little slot, like he played slot, and he said, he thinks that's a really good role and a really good position for Sanders to have. So it was interesting to see a guy like Stokely, who was so successful as a slot receiver, saying that he thinks Sanders is going to be able to fill the role pretty well. And I understand there was some uh, red zone work that was being put in. This is an aspect of the um, Broncos' offense that a lot of us are intrigued about because – uh, the red zone threat in Julius Thomas, or at least somebody that we thought was a red zone uh, threat in Julius Thomas, is no longer here. And how much did they work on the red zone situations today, and who were most of the passes being thrown at? Uh, I don't know if there was necessarily one particular guy that mm-hmm. most of the passes were being thrown at because they were they were running the ball frequently in the red zone, and... Um, asked about it a little bit afterwards, the coaches were kind of saying that um, they're okay with running the ball in the end zone because you get, they want three, four yards a a play, that's positive yards, do that two, three times, first down, two, three times again, touchdown. So they kind of like to grind it out and just pick up yards on the ground, but they they obviously still can throw, and a guy that I think is going to take away some of Julius Thomas's targets from last year and maybe have a uh, 10, 12 touchdown year, I think, could be Owen Daniels. He's uh, a really nice tight end. I think he's kind of a underrated guy, and going into this year, I think he could be under the radar a little bit. I think he could have a pretty good fantasy year. Um, along the same lines as uh, tight end, Virgil Green, what have you seen from him lately? A lot of people kind of said, you know, show who cares if Julius Thomas leaves because Virgil Green is a guy that can step up. Have you seen anything of note from uh, Virgil Green so far? Well, he hasn't uh, He hasn't stood out as a pass-catching guy because I think that right now Owen Daniels is their pass-catching guy, even though Daniels is a good blocker. It seems like Daniels is the guy that they're going to be throwing the ball to, and when they have, like, some two tight end sets or some tight ends they want to bring in mostly for blocking, it seems like Virgil Green and Casey Daniels, or uh, excuse me, um, uh, 
James uh, Casey. Casey. Yeah. Yeah, James Casey. The other tight end. It seems like him and Green are kind of their two blocking tight ends. They really like them blocking, but they can obviously both catch. So Green is a guy that he can catch, but I don't feel like they're, he's a guy that they're going to lean on to catch. I think Daniels is going to be kind of their pass catcher, and Green's going to be an important part of the offense, but I don't think he's going to be – he's not going to be putting up Julius Thomas numbers. I'll put it that way. John Heath of Mile High Report joining us here on uh, Extra Sports 1300. This is Drive Time Sports. Um, I was I'm interested in the middle of the Broncos defense. Um, a guy that we like a lot personally because he's been on the show is is uh, Stephen Johnson. How much have you seen of him, and has he impressed you at all at that uh, one of those middle linebacker spots? Yeah, uh, Steven Johnson and Todd Davis, because Brandon Marshall and Danny Trevathan are banged up, they've been taking pretty much all of the first team reps and team drills. And I think both, uh, Johnson and Davis have been playing well. And, uh, Wade Phillips actually talked after practice today, and he was talking about how with Marshall and Trevathan being a little ting- dinged up and then easing them in, he said the backups, which is like Johnson and Davis, he said they're getting a lot of time. And he said that the backup middle linebackers in Denver, are the best backup middle linebackers he ever had. Hmm. And I thought that was interesting because uh, he's been around for a while. He's coached a lot of guys on defense. He's coached a lot of good, successful defenses. So for him to say Denver's backups, Todd Davis and Steven, uh, are Steven, the yeah, better Steven guys Johnson. he's ever had, mm-hmm. I think uh, that speaks well to them. I think Denver has a, a very nice depth right now on the inside. And that's important, John, because there aren't a lot of Ray Lewises that are just going to be out there every single snap. Linebacker has become kind of a rotational position, so that depth is going to be vitally important for the Broncos, don't you think? Yeah, it certainly. It certainly is. They're going to be moving a lot of guys around on defense, not only on the defensive line, but at linebacker. So, yeah, it's very nice for them to have that, not just in case injuries happen. Like, right now they have some guys thinged up, but like you said, they're going to be rotating in some different packages and getting some different looks. So it's very nice to have talented guys that can be pushed in uh, pushed in for different packages and them not miss a beat on defense. Follow him on Twitter, at John Heath uh, NFL. He writes for Mile High Report. Um, is the strong safety position Darian Stewart's to lose? I don't think it's his to lose. I think it's his period. Nobody oh, okay. that I've noticed has been pushing him for the job right now it, it seems like um david bruton is the number three guy kind of a swing safety he's um when they bring tj ward down in the box it's stewart and bruton up top and um i think right stewart he has not been jumping out but he also hasn't been making a lot of mistakes he's just kind of been the guy and no one else underneath him has really been jumping out to me i don't think anyone else has really been jumping out to the coaching staff so i think right now uh, Stewart and Ward are definitely the guys back there. And uh, as how much have they uh, worked on uh, kick returns and punt returns? Uh, they've been doing a lot of special teams yeah. work the last few days. Uh, I feel like right now uh, Omar Bolden is the uh, kick returner, and on punt returns there it seems like they're kind of having a little bit of a competition. They threw Emmanuel Sanders back there a little bit, but I don't think they want him to be the guy, he's just an option. Mm-hmm. They've had uh, Jordan Norwood back there, Isaiah Burst, he's obviously done it before. Uh, they've even put Bubba Caldwell back there. So they, they've been mixing, they've given a lot of the young receivers reps at punt returning and um, on kickoffs. It looks like Bolden's their guy right now. And following uh, some people that were up there as you were uh, today, a lot of talk was about Von Miller and the hit that he put on, can you elaborate on that? A, a specific hit you're talking about? Y- yeah, uh, Paul, our, our, uh, our, one of the columnists from the Carl Springs Gazette, Paul Klee, basically said it was like a walk-off sack. Like he made this big hit and then he just kept kept running off the field. Oh, I, I believe I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They, were doing, uh, they were doing one-on-one drills. They were having linebackers and like some defensive end, like some edge rushers go one-on-one with uh, the tackles, and Von Miller was going up against Ryan Harris, and Miller just kind of ducked underneath Harris and got right underneath him right away. Harris was just totally lost Miller, didn't had no idea where he even was, and Miller just kept on running, jumping up and down, 
He was screaming and shouting because he was so excited how quickly he got by him. He ran into the locker room, jumping up and down and shouting, and then he turned around and came walked back out and got back in the drill. He was very excited about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems like uh, it's something interesting that one of the local TV guys brought up when we had him on in the first hour. Talking about, because we talked yesterday about the offensive line and how some of those guys had looked. Um, he brought kind of a different perspective and maybe it was a little bit of, of hopefulness, but he put it out there that maybe the offensive line struggles here early in camp have more to do with the guys they're facing on the other side of the ball than anything on their end. Do you, um, buy it all into that line of thinking, or do you think that there are some serious problems on the Broncos' offensive line? I think there are some problems, but I think that it's a, it is a factor into them having some struggles that they're going against guys like Warren Miller, but they have to get it together because in week one they're going to be going at guys against guys like Elvis Dumervale and Terrell Suggs. So there's, uh, there's other guys in the NFL that are at quality of Miller and where, so they can't just be getting roasted by them every play because it's if it happens against them, it's going to happen against other teams too. It's not like everybody else has scrub edge rushers. So I think uh, it's it's a reflection of both. Denver obviously has talented guys that can get after the passer, but the offensive line has got to do a better job of slowing them down more consistently. And I think um, guys like Ware are very beneficial, though. They're, Ware is a great teacher, and he's helping them. I think he's really been helping Ty a lot. And Ty, on his first day, really, really struggled in camp. But since then, I feel like each day he's been getting a little better and a little better. But I still don't think that the offensive line is where it's at, and I don't think the lineup they have right now will be their week one lineup. I think they'll go into preseason. They'll see how this lineup works. They'll probably switch things up around a little bit. And if it's still a complete mess, I wouldn't be surprised if – they end up with a starter either at guard or a tackle that's not on the roster right now. So I think uh, through preseason, they're going to be moving guys around some more, and they're going to try to find a, find a group of guys that plays well together, and I think that will be the biggest thing for them, just getting a unit, maybe not the most talented unit, but a unit that uh, is well well knit together and can play well together is what they're really trying to get. And if you're a Broncos fan, you need to have a Mile High Report favorited in your web browser because they have it all. John, today I noticed you guys have video, you guys have Twitter feeds. Talk about everything that you got up at Mile High Report today. Yeah, we have we have some daily practice reports going up. We try to get a daily photo album going up. Sometimes uh, fans will share like a video or something, or we'll take a video of ourselves and we'll put that up on the homepage. We do have a live Twitter feed every day, so you can go on the blog, and it's just a Twitter feed dedicated to people that are out or at practice. So instead of getting everything else that's clogged up on your Twitter timeline for everything you follow, you can just go there and just see only from people that are at camp and get some live updates. So that's pretty cool. And there's also some fans that uh, have been out of practice and have been writing fan posts. We're going to be getting promoting them on the front page. So there's a lot of cool camp stuff going on right now on the site. Very good. Follow him on Twitter at uh, John Heath NFL. That's J O N like John Gray, who's having his uh, major league uh, debut tonight. And read him as well as all the writers and the fans on MileHighReport.com. John, thanks as always for the time, and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. You bet. That's John Heath from Mile High Report joining us to give us a rundown of all things Broncos training camp as the front page of their website would suggest we continue with the theme next of interviews one of the newest members of switchbacks fc is an mls veteran his name is chandler hoffman and we will talk to him next this is drive time sports here on extra sports 1300 